So I think most people have joined. We can probably kick this off. Um, welcome, everyone, incoming students, uh, to the academic welcome, which I tried to think of a way to avoid using welcome twice, but <laughs> welcome to the welcome. And we're going to start things off with Dean of the College, Bruce Setmeyer. Uh, thank you, Katie. Uh, welcome, everybody. Thank you for getting up early. Um, I assume it uh, was a long night, so I appreciate you getting up. Um, my name is Bruce Suttmeyer. I'm the Dean of the College, and I'm also a faculty member in the World Languages Department. I teach Japanese language and literature. Um, I've been here since 2001, um, and I'm originally from upstate New York. Um, we are so excited to have you here. Um, I've been meeting uh, with the faculty all week in sessions to get ready uh, for meeting you today in the uh, academic fair and in advising. Um, it is a very disorienting time. I remember my own time um, being a, a first year student in undergrad, um, and I was sure I wanted to be a math computer science major. Uh, that is what I uh, started out as, and that, those are all the classes I took in my first year uh, of college. And uh, as you'll see, I am not a math and computer science uh, teacher, nor do I uh, have I done math or computer science in quite a while. Um, I was sure I wanted to do that. And yet um, when I first uh, was in orientation in my first year, I had to take a Spanish placement test. And you had to get 500 to pass out of the language requirement. And the first time I took it, I got a 480 and didn't pass. So I took a retest a couple of weeks later, studied a little bit and got a 490. And finally, third time was the charm. A couple of weeks later, a very kind um, uh, person allowed me to take the test again, and I got a 510. Um, the lessons beyond that my high school Spanish really didn't prepare me well uh, for uh, college Spanish. Um, the other lesson was that things happen during the first year. It is very unpredictable. My sophomore year, completely on a whim, I decided to take first year Japanese. I loved it. I loved the instructor. Um, I went to office hours all the time and it was clearly something that um, ignited something in me um, about the excitement of learning this language and about learning about this culture. Um, those kind of serendipitous things happen at Lewis and Clark. And I want you to be open to them um, this year. Um, my first year, lots of things happened that took me down paths that really were dead ends. And um, they had the possibility of um, really derailing um, my math computer science dreams. Um, and yet, I think the faculty members that I talked to, the faculty members that helped me, the student life um, and other advisors that helped me were the ones that got me through. Lewis and Clark is a community that will help you get through as you, you know, go and hit those dead ends and don't quite know what to do. Um, when I was, uh, you know, coming out of high school from upstate New York, tiny graduating class of 86 uh, students, um, you know, Japanese, what did I know about Japanese? Um, I don't think we even had any, um, uh, you know, Japanese people or people of Asian American descent um, in my town. Um, going to undergrad, kind of opened me up to these possibilities. I had never been west of the Mississippi. Um, I had never traveled abroad. Um, and this allowed me in many ways to experience things that really excited me. Um, coming to Lewis and Clark, leading a group of students um, several years ago to Vietnam in the overseas program, um, leading a group of students to Siena, Italy, there are lots of opportunities here. 
So as you navigate this first week, as you navigate this first month at Lewis and Clark, one thing I really want you to do is to get involved and reach out to people, people on your dorm, um, people uh, in student life, your RA, your um, AD, um, the staff in college advising that you'll meet today, the uh, staff and my colleagues in the library, um, the faculty advisors you'll meet today. Um, reach out to us and talk to us about um, things you're excited about, things that worry you, and uh, we can help you and we can help direct you to uh, the resources you need. Um, when I talk to my own advisees every year, um, I talk to them about taking some enjoyable risks uh, in their academic career. If they're interested in STEM fields, I say, take a poetry class with Mary Shebus. Take an acting class uh, with Rebecca Lingefelter. Um, it will be transformative. If you're a, uh, a humanities major, um, try taking one of the great ideas in physics classes or reach outside what feels comfortable um, because you might change from math, computer science to Japanese. Um, one never knows. Um, so we are very, very excited to have you here. We are um, looking forward to meeting you uh, in person later today. I look forward to meeting my own advisees uh, later this afternoon. Um, I'm curious about what you're curious about. Um, we have lots and lots of resources and lots and lots of people who can help you. Um, maybe most of all, my colleague uh, right across the hall here, um, Katie McFadden, who leads our College Advising Center. You've been working with them all summer, um, and she today can um, talk a little bit about navigating this next step of making sure your classes are set for Monday, um, but thinking much more beyond that, thinking about your four years at Lewis and Clark and what those will look like. So with that, uh, let me welcome you again to Lewis and Clark. We're really excited you're here. Um, and let me turn it back over to uh, Katie. Thanks, Bruce. Hi, everybody. I'm Katie McFadden. Uh, let me share my screen here. Oh, maybe I can't at this moment. That's OK. So um, as Bruce mentioned, I'm director at the College Advising Center. And I'm joined here by my three colleagues in the advising center. Oh, there, they'll, they'll come on. And at the moment that I'll share my screen, this is great. Good. Um, okay, so I, I'll let them introduce themselves briefly. Katie Lemon, do you wanna go first? Hi, I'm Katie Lemon, I'm one of the college advisors. And Heather or Catherine? Hi, I'm Heather Miner. I'm also a college advisor. Welcome. It's nice to see everybody. Hi, hey everyone. My name is Catherine Leibel, um, and welcome to Lewis and Clark. Great. All right. So the four of us are, in, as I said, in the College Advising Center. You have heard from one of us this summer, at least, maybe talked with us. Um, we are full time staff advisors, so it means our job is advising undergraduate students. Um, and because today is all about academics and you'll be meeting with not just uh, academic programs and departments at the fair, but also your faculty advisor, I wanted to take a second and revisit our advising model just because today is a day, especially that sometimes students will say, wait, I, you know, I worked with Katie Lemon all summer and now I'm meeting someone else and I'm, I'm a little confused. So for the sake of that, I wanted to talk through it just for a moment. From this summer, your first semester, so whether you're a transfer student or a first year student from the very beginning, all the way through till graduation, you are matched with one of us in the College Advising Center. And we are here as a resource if you want to, especially if you want to do kind of long-term planning or maybe discuss multiple options and compare them. We do a lot of breadth and we know a lot about policy and stuff in the catalog. So we can be a good first stop if you're just not sure who to ask or you want to get that kind of second opinion or another.
of um, what, you know, faculty at the college, what it means to get to know faculty members and all the ways that you can benefit from that relationship. At the point you declare your major, uh, that person will swap out for someone in your department. Um, most of the time people swap. I suppose you could keep the same person if you end up declaring a major um, in the department where your faculty advisor, your first advisor works. But for most people, when they declare a major, that person swaps into their department. Um, so today, when you meet with your faculty advisor, I think you, you have, there's two goals there. The first goal is simply just get to know them. Just get to know who they are. Um, sounds silly, but what's their name? Who are they? And uh, what's the best way to reach them? If they don't discuss that, you can ask. Um, I think you can just ask them some simple questions to like, what is their favorite class to teach and why? Uh, what's a class they recommend trying if you've never, you know, taken something in their department before? Um, just kind of get to know them as a person and feel like you can establish a little bit of relationship there because moving forward, they are your main point of contact each semester when you register for the next semester's classes. The second goal for today is um, have them look over your schedule and just talk about whether your schedule and what questions you might have for the first week. So anything you're feeling uncertain about, you're not sure um, as you go into next week, your first week of classes, just kind of check with your faculty advisor and see if they can answer those. Um, I think beyond those two things, you don't have to get too worried about that meeting today. Just get to know them, kind of talk about any questions you have. Um, after this session, you're going to go to the academic fair. And for that, you'll have there's tables and you can talk with anybody from any program or department. So that's a great uh, opportunity just to talk to more faculty and even beyond classes. Let's say you like your schedule you have, but you could still talk to programs about what are opportunities outside the classroom to get to know them, get involved in a club, um, try out a performance or a, a, a performance group in the music department, you know, even if you're not looking to switch classes, you can think about making connections at the academic fair outside of the classroom as well. Um, I think I'll pause there. I know we're going to have time for Q&A at the end, but mostly I just wanted to kind of set the stage for what the meeting was today with your faculty advisor and how that fits in with the relationship with the College Advising Center. So I think with that, I'll pass it off to Watson Library. Thanks, Katie. Give us a moment to share our screen. Great. Welcome. And welcome to Watsik. Hopefully you'll come on in soon enough. Um, I'm Jenny Bornstein. I'm the resource sharing specialist at Watsik Library. And I'm joined by my colleague, Erica Jensen, the research and instruction librarian at Watsik. I've been here 18 years and Erica has been here six. And you could say we're big Watsik fans. So today we are going to answer questions that you submitted to the library. Um, so you might see a question that you actually submitted and we're gonna answer. We're gonna show you some tips and advice from returning students and we'll have a couple of thoughts of our own. So let's get started. You asked us, what are the library hours and do hours change during finals? So we are open 24 hours a day from 9 a.m. on Sunday until Friday at 10 p.m. and then again on Saturday from 11 to seven. So for 141 hours a week, we are there to help you. There is a real live human adult staff person who can help you and answer any questions that you have and get you started with research. And we also have student employees working a lot of that time as well. Right before finals, we are open even more hours. So come on in or check our website. We're probably open. Our next questions were, is it a good environment for homework? And what are the best study spaces in the library? And how do the different study spaces vary? We have tons of different study spaces. So you'll have to come on in and find your spot. We have group study rooms that are available to reserve online. And we have another image of a group study room pre-COVID. Um, we will be wearing masks. When there we go. Okay, there's our collaborative work study area. 
And then we also have quiet study areas with big tables where you can spread out either alone or with your friends. And we also have um, individual study carols. We have signage where it says um, to indicate which areas are quiet study areas. So come on in, find your spot. I'm sure we'll have an area for you depending on um, where you wanna work. So our next question is very important. Can we borrow textbooks that we are going to use in class from the library and does it have enough for all students? Yes and no. So we have a reserves um, program where all your assigned readings are available on reserve in the library. So what this means is you will come into the library, you will walk up the stairs, you will go through the security gates, and immediately on your left is going to be our service desk, which is um, staffed by a friendly face, either a student or staff person. And you will need your, your ID card, which is also your library card. And you will need the name of your professor and the title of the book that you need on reserve. And they will help you find that book and you will get to check it out for three hours at a time. Now, here's the tricky part. If you and 19 other people in that class have an assignment due tomorrow, it's possible that someone else in the class has already checked out the book. So beware of that and, and you might need to plan differently that day. Are college libraries like public libraries where you just go in with a library card and check out books? Yes, come visit us. Okay, we have a series of rapid fire the how many questions, starting with, is there a limit on how many books we can check out at a time? Yes, it's a couple hundred, so I hope you never reach that limit. That's a lot of books to keep track of. How long are we allowed to keep the books? Usually around six weeks with one six week, six week renewal period. Um, there are exceptions, but that pretty much covers it. How many pages can we print out per class during each semester and can I print in color? You have 600 pages um, the entire academic year and we do have a color printer. A tip from one of our returning students is that people often don't know that you can scan something to your email and then use your print balance to print rather than making copies of something. So we have scanners in the library and you can do just this, scan to email. Okay, so I'm gonna take over with the rest of the questions and tips. Um, one of you asked, how would you describe the atmosphere inside Watsik Library? So I think there's really no substitute for you coming in and discovering what the atmosphere of the library is like for yourself. But I'm gonna show you some photos that maybe will give you a sense of it as a well-lit, um, very inviting place. I find this library the most comfortable academic library I've ever worked in, and I've worked in three other ones. Um, it feels really broken in, in the best way, like a comfortable pair of shoes. Um, it also has its seasons. We have busy seasons and we have more peaceful seasons, uh, as well as microclimates. And I mean that both literally, there are cold areas of the library and warmer areas of the library, but there are also um, more still areas of the library and more lively areas. Um, one thing as an aspiring and not very good gardener that I love about the library is that we're sort of situated both within the forest or at the edge of the forest and adjacent to these very formal gardens. And I think that's a nice metaphor for the library as both a place of order and organization and um, lively organic exploration, which is really what all of you bring to the place. Um, our students wanted you to know that the library is for more than just study. You can chat quietly with your friends in the lobby, wander through the reading room, or read by the fireplace. Um, it is a comfortable place. We do have these couches. Uh, we also have comfortable chairs, and people do occasionally sleep in the library, but frequently they also just come here to hang out and have fun and maybe read something enjoyable, as well as doing classwork. Does Watsik provide an online catalog? One of you asked. I love this question. Yes, we do provide an online catalog. I'm going to show you really quickly how easy it is to use. So if you want to look something up to see if we have it or if it's something you can borrow from another institution, which is a very important service we provide, all you need to do is go to our library website. So it's library.lclark.edu, bookmark that page early, and you'll just want to look uh, for the middle of the page. It's got this big search box 
And you can just start typing here without really knowing anything very advanced about, about this tool. Um, so one thing I like to do is look up people I know or people you're coming in contact with. So I thought, hmm, let's see what, what comes up for the Dean of our college, Bruce Suttmeyer. So I simply typed in Bruce Suttmeyer, Japan, knowing that Bruce is a scholar of Japanese literature. And you can see this is not an advanced search I did. I didn't capitalize anything. I didn't use any Boolean operators, um, but pretty quickly I get some, some good results. So you don't really need to know a lot to use this fairly effectively. There are definitely fancier things you can do with it that will get you more precise results, um, but you can, you can get a lot done just um, using it essentially like Google. And I wanted to show you briefly the variety of things that will come up just by using this one search tool. So we get a scholarly article written by Bruce Suttmeyer uh, that was published in the Journal of Japanese Studies. We also get a print book that contains a chapter by our dean. Um, so this is a book that we have here in the library, in the stacks. Those are the books that you can just check out freely yourself. And we also have an ebook version of exactly the same book. And we do have a lot of ebooks. Several of you asked questions about what kinds of books we have. Are they more academic or are there more casual reading books? And the, the heart of our collection is academic. Um, we're an academic library, that's probably what you expect. But I do want you to know, we also have things that you might want to borrow for fun or enrichment or just to explore a side interest. So we, we actually have a fair number of cookbooks for an academic library. Um, we have young adult and children's books. We have some graphic novels. Um, we also have other kinds of media. So one of our returning students wanted you to know that we have DVDs, CDs, and actually even vinyl in-house. Uh, so that includes TV shows and movies. And if you're thinking, well, DVDs, that's great, but you know my computer actually doesn't have a DVD drive, I'm with you. Um, and I want you to know that you can borrow a portable DVD drive, both from the library, just at the desk where you would check out books, and also from IT. Uh, we also have books that you might just read for fun. We have a fair amount of current literature. And I, I did not plan this. I took a photo of a random shelf, and then I noticed um, this hap happened to include creative work by Lewis and Clark faculty. So this is Paul Tutangi's Dog Gone, a recent book. One of our returning students gave a piece of advice that I really love that um, you try checking out a few books to figure out how to use call numbers. So this is a great thing to do early on at, in your time at the college. And if you need help with this, the main thing to remember is that there's a lot of help available for you. So this student comments that the Library of Congress system, which is what we use instead of the Dewey Decimal System, is complex and takes practice, but it's super important for the use of the library. And I agree. And I just want to show you right now what a call number looks like. It's just this little sequence of letters and numbers on the spine of the book it tells you where to find the book in the library. So again, don't worry too much about that now. When you're in a position of needing to find a book, um, just come ask for help. Uh, is there a decent foreign language section? You'll have to judge for yourself, but let me show you a little bit of what we have. We have literature in French untranslated. We have literature in Japanese. We have ancient languages like Greek. We have German. A couple of people actually asked about German books. Um, and this is not exhaustive. We, we have more as well. Um, one of our students wanted you to know that you can request books from other libraries. This is very easy. This is done through the same catalog that I showed you earlier, which we call Primo. Um, it's really not a hassle at all. And don't be like this student's friend uh, who was in their junior year without knowing this. Uh, this is a really key service that we provide as a not huge academic library. We can connect you with the holdings of huge academic libraries that belong to this same group that shares resources with us. I loved this question as well. Really, the theme is perhaps that I love all of these questions. How can first year students best take advantage of the resources the library offers? Um, so the first thing I would say is, I think it's a good idea early on to try to make it a habit of weaving some way of using the library into your academic life. So that might be that you come in to study in this space, or that you, uh, you discover that we have a textbook on reserve that's really helpful for one of your classes and you borrow it on a regular basis. Or maybe you um, 
you know, you love movies and you want to work through our DVD collection. Just something that that fits with your your normal life and makes things a little bit easier, a little bit more fun. And then adjacent to that tip is um, anytime you're not sure what to do, please ask us for help. Anything that's unclear, don't don't feel that you need to figure it all out yourself. So one of our students wanted you to know that one way to get help is that you can walk up to the front desk to ask for help finding books or literally anything. And this person was very excited, I guess. Three exclamation marks. So again, at this first desk where you check out books and borrow reserves, you can also just come with any question whatsoever. Um, there are also research librarians. I'm one of them uh, who this student felt are super available and helpful when it comes to research. So. We also staff a desk that's pretty prominent when you walk into the library, a little bit less, um, quite a bit less actually than that other desk. We're there about uh, 20 hours a week, I think. So middle of the day on weekdays. And we're there to help you with any kind of research question that you're having, but we're also there to help you with smaller questions. Like, I don't know where to go to find this book. I'm always thrilled to, to have someone ask me that question. We're also available off the desk um, by appointment to meet one-on-one. -on -one and by email and in, in any other way that really fits with your needs. As first year students, you all should have received an email by now from someone introducing themselves as their, your personal librarian. Um, some of you have gotten emails from me. And this person is a great resource to you in your first year. You can turn to us with any question you have. We don't expect you to figure out who your question really needs to go to. So just make this person, your personal librarian, your first stop with any questions that you have about using Watsik Library. And if you open this email, you'll see that there's a chance to win a free coffee cup. Um, we're having a drawing. The way to enter is to ask us a question through the form that's included in this email. So this is where these questions that we're answering today are coming from. Sorry, I think that went too far. Um, our students also wanted you to know that you can get help at the library without even coming into the building. So a lot of people apparently don't know about the chat option. So you're not, you're not going to be among these people who don't know about this option because I'm going to show you exactly where it is. So again, on the library webpage, library.lclark.edu, just look for the orange button at the bottom right-hand corner of the page. Anytime that's on, someone is available to answer your question. Uh, there are also other important resources in the library building. This person wanted to point out the Writing Center as a wonderful resource. Um, IT is also in the same building as us. So we can really be your one-stop shop for a lot of um, questions that you have. Um, related to academics. One sad note to end on, um, for the time being, you're seeing our faces right now, but we are masked in the library and we need you to be masked in the library too, in every single part of it, which includes sitting alone in a study room. Um, I really hope this changes um, if the situation in our county improves. Um, so hopefully we'll, we'll see your faces soon. And that's that's it for what we've got as far as your questions and tips from returning students and our thoughts. Um, but we hope that you will come in and explore and let us know how we can help. So, thank you. Thank you, Erica and Jenny. I feel like you captured so well the feel of being in the library. There's such nice photos of what it's like to be in there. It was really great. Um, we have some time, we have plenty of time actually for Q&A. And I think one thing that maybe is hard, um, yes, we're having, Henry says we're having some internet things right now, as you saw. And I think that that might be a little hard thing about the Zoom format, but a benefit is you can ask questions in the chat and you can ask them anonymously if you prefer. Um, so we do have a little time if you wanted to ask some Q&A. You do have the Dean of the college with you. And um, we have four advisors and two awesome librarians. So if there's something you're curious about related to academics or related to the day, you can type it in the Q&A box at the bottom and we can answer a few of those. Let me make this big. Uh, let's see here. Someone asked, oh, we've got some library questions, Jenny and Erica. So somebody said, where is the library and are there ebook options for textbooks? I can answer that. So we're we're right in the heart of campus. Um, if you have been on the lawn that's between 
oh shoot, I'm blanking on the names, Howard and someone help me out here. I should know, but I don't need to. <laughs> if you've so been on a big- Howard and Bodine. Howard and Bodine, the Howard Bodine Bermuda Triangle. We are sort of um, the building that the lawn points at. It's a big building, again, it's sort of hidden inside a bit of a forest. It's on the other side of the formal gardens. Um, so <laughs> as far as ebooks that are available as textbooks, in many cases, yes. And where we have ebooks, we do put them on reserve. Um, some ebooks will allow many people to use them at once, and some are a little bit more restricted. But yeah, that's that's certainly a good option to be aware of. Thanks. Yeah, do you want me to just keep reading, Erica? Sure. I can't see any of this. Yeah, I'll keep oh, going. No there they are. Um, can we use a library printer today? Jenny, you should confirm this, but my sense is yes. As long as you're, I think as long as you're set up with IT, your account is ready. Yes, we are ready for you. Awesome. Come on in. <laughs> um, librarians, what are your favorite areas of the library? Jenny, go for it. it depends on the day. Um, I don't get to hang out in many areas of the library as to chill out. I'm mostly working, but I love the service desk because you can always get help there and there are always students staffing the desk who are amazing. Um, and then it kind of depends on the weather and if I want to be looking out and seeing the beautiful trees or at the moment my view is of the um, academic fair and it's really fun to be looking out front and seeing everyone on the lawn hanging out. So it really does depend on what you're in the mood for. Yeah, I would say there's a balcony that I really love that I would recommend checking out. It's got some very comfortable chairs. Um, but my favorite spot in the library to walk past on a clear day is the one place in the building where you can kind of get a glimpse of Mount St. Helens. So I challenge you to find that one spot. Wonderful. Katie Lemon, you wanted to answer a question about, um, someone said, we're supposed to bring a copy of our schedule to our faculty advisor meeting today. Would a digital copy work? Yes, absolutely. So you guys can all view your schedules through WebAdvisor. Um, so you can even bring your laptop um, and view it there. Uh, take a picture with your phone. Anything will work. Yeah, that would probably be um, the easiest and maybe even the most useful to look at it together in WebAdvisor. Yeah. Um, librarians, you're back on. Can the library staff help us with formatting, citing resources for papers? We can give you some amount of help with this. The Writing Center is um, potentially a better place, but really in either place, what you're going to get is someone walking you through the process and trying to um, encourage you to feel empowered to, to proceed with your citations. We're, we're not typically going to sit down with you and go through a full list of citations, but we will certainly help you connect with the resources that will help you, um, you know, figure out how to do those. And in some cases, we have electronic resources we can point you toward. And uh, we also have a lot of print books that are good manuals um, for citation. Is there a time limit, a limit of time you someone can spend in the library? No. <laughs> I know, isn't that a great question to get as a librarian? That's so it nice. Is. That's and I, I wanted to say one thing that I think we, we meant to mention uh, that we really take for granted, but that a lot of students sometimes ask about kind of hesitatingly is that uh, everything that we provide in the library is free for you. Um, sometimes people wonder, is there a charge for this? And for you, no. So please keep that in mind. Um, two questions about working in the library. Are there work-study positions that are flexible with student schedules? And can you complete work-study by working in the library? Yes, um, I think almost all of our positions are work study. Um, the service desk employees over 20 students, we are fully um, booked for the fall. And um, so check back in the spring or right before the spring semester, we do advertise online and work day. Um, I have a position open at the moment that is not a customer service position. Um, it is more behind the scenes. It's a quieter position where you're working independently. So we have different types of uh, work study positions available. There are other departments that may have some openings, um, especially in the spring. Um, so yeah, there, there's something for everyone. Like I keep saying, it seems to be a theme about the library. Along those lines, can you eat in any part of the library? Um, and what are some of the quieter areas? Those are two separate questions, but they both kind of get at 
activities you can do easily in the libraries? Sure. So at the moment, um, we our, our eating policy, our food and drink policy is um, drinks with a covered lid because we do not want any spillage on our materials or on the tables. Um, and we don't like rodents and bugs. Um, and you can eat in the atrium of the library, which doesn't mean much to you if you haven't been in the library, but when you come up the stairs and walk into the library, there's this big high ceiling, um, which we call the atrium, and you are able to eat in there. Um, because we still have a mask policy, we ask that you only take off your mask when you are ingesting the food um, or a drink. Um, so for now, only eating in the atrium and quiet areas. That was the question. Um, there is signage of different quiet areas on um, each floor of the library. So there's an image, uh, looks like a volume image, like on a computer um, and we can point those areas out to you. Uh, how do you check out an ebook? Anything special someone needs to know? Um, I think the one thing you might want to know if you're used to using public library ebooks is that our ebooks tend not to be compatible with e-readers. So you need to bar you need to use them in your browser typically. Mm -hmm. So what a lot of people do is download a chapter. Um, that that's a nice way to be able to print it out if you prefer to be able to mark it up, which a lot of your professors will repeatedly encourage you to do, and which I agree is a good idea. Um, you can also conceivably download a whole ebook and put it somewhere, but in my experience, that tends not to work very well. So usually with ebooks, we find that people are just using a segment of them and the chapter download option works really well. But if you have more questions about this, just come to the library and ask. And enter to win a free prize from your, yeah. uh, no, oh, this, okay, you can show it. That's the, wait, hold it up again. That's what someone can get. This is the, it is a um, stainless steel tumbler. It's got our little Bostic owl on it and kind of a puzzle that is explained inside the coffee cup. And it also says Wasik Library, Lewis and Clark College. That's lovely. Okay. Uh, can you get any of the textbooks or other books as audiobooks or e audiobooks? Not really. <laughs> that would be my answer is um, we don't really have many options for audiobooks at this time, um, especially for textbooks. They don't seem to be published as audiobooks, but Erica, correct me if I'm wrong. No, I think that's right. Um, I think if you need some kind of um, Alternative, you may want to work with the Office of Student Accessibility. Mm -hmm. I can say that if you have a required text that is not a textbook per se, like Introduction to Calculus, but you know maybe it's, it's a memoir or a novel or something, um, you might be able to find an audiobook through our public library, which is the Multnomah County Library. And in the past, we've had them come to campus to do library card drives. Um, it's, I think it's also very easy to set up a public library card right now without going anywhere. So if you're in this situation, um, definitely you know, reach out to your, your personal librarian or one of us, and we can help you get connected with the public library to see if that might maybe patch some gaps. Yeah, I certainly Office can get of a lot of accessibility. <laughs> yes, those are both great, great ideas. Um, this one, one of us might have to look up, but someone's asking, is the mail room following the summer schedule? What are their hours, if not? So we will take a look at that. And, or Bruce, do you know offhand? I, um, well, I don't know offhand, but I did do a Google search um, as the question came up. Yeah. And um, the, the hours, I believe, I just type in mail room um, in the Lewis and Clark. Um, browser, but I believe it's um, they're open at 11 for students. Um, they do usually close for lunch and then they're open in the afternoon until four or five. Um, I'm not sure what the summer hours were, but um, it is somewhat limited in the afternoon. Um, mail gets delivered usually at 1230 and then it gets kind of parceled out to everyone's boxes as the day goes on. And did you come on also to answer the question about renting textbooks? I did. Yeah. Um, so if uh, you go to the bookstore, either online um, or the physical bookstore, there's usually two prices. Most textbooks can be rented. 
um, and you can um, you know, rent them for the semester and then they get turned back in. It is cheaper to do that. Um, and you should also work with ASLC, the, um, uh, the students um, organization, your student government um, has a program of um, rental textbooks and can help you with that. So um, reach out to Sarah and, and uh, her team, your representatives, and they can help. Um, somewhat, I think this question is in relation to an earlier comment about um, printing at the library today. And I think one of you said, you know, if you're set up with IT, that should work. And someone just wanted to clarify what that meant or if they had to do something special for that. If you have a Lewis and Clark email, then you can log into any of the computers in the library. Um, if that doesn't answer your question, let me know. Yeah, well, and IT is also in the, I guess this is a great example of, and we've kind of touched on this at various places this morning, but we've heard a lot of um, people are here to help, just ask. And I do get a lot of questions sometimes from students saying, I'm not sure the right person to ask. And I guess I'd say a great benefit of a small college like this is we all know each other. It's very relational. It, like, it's very collaborative. So don't get too tied up in, I'm not sure the right person to ask. You could ask almost anybody. And if we don't know, we're gonna say, oh, I, I know who you can ask. Let me put you in touch with them. And that happens all the time. It's very normal. Um, so I would say people make the bigger mistake by sitting on something and just not inquiring and not you know, going out of their way to ask somebody. So you should, you should do that. Um, and someone said, are we able to print in the library from our own computers? Yes, there usually is Wi-Fi printing. I have not checked if that is working properly. I will say it's a lot easier to log into a library computer and print. Um, there are fewer issues <laughs> if you do that, but you can definitely bring your computer to the library and we can help you print. I think just a clarifying question, like about printing today or seeing yeah. IT first, the library and IT are in the same building. So maybe the easier answer there is you could just go over to the library today and ask. And if you need to see IT, they're right there. So you're in the right spot. Um, that'd be kind of an easy stop. Yep, agree. Oh, we got a couple of people answering questions, which is great. And someone said, can you print off a USB flash drive and then scan onto a USB flash drive? You can definitely print off a USB flash drive. Scanning onto a USB, I'm trying to think. I don't think so. I think you would need to, I think they scan to your email um, and it would be a PDF in your email, but I don't think directly to a USB. It's a good question. Let's type that in real quick, good. Um, next, everyone's gonna go to the academic fair. So. I saw one question come through just about making the most of the academic fair, but did anyone have any other questions about the fair that's next or advising meetings that come later today? Maybe I'll ask a question of the panelists then, just to, just to give everybody a second, the um, participants. Um, Bruce let us know that he took Japanese on a whim. He is now Japanese professor. Anybody else want to share a class that was a surprise to them? So maybe you took it, just you're not sure why, but it turned into one of your favorite classes. Do you want to share that? I think that's a good theme for today and the semester coming up. There are planned choices we make and sometimes the surprises are really the best. Erica? Yes, I have one that is really relevant for people at this college. So in my last year of college, I took a Javanese gamelan class on a whim. And I so wish I had taken this earlier because I now have <laughs> this fantasy in which I was exposed to that earlier and became an ethnomusicologist, which is probably a hard profession to have these days. Um, but we have a Javanese gamelan here. And if you ever get a chance to hear it, please do. It is the most enchantingly beautiful music and it, it really transports you into a different frame of mind in my experience, which is so valuable right now. It's the frame of mind that I think we all really miss right now. Um, 
And you can not only hear it in performances, but there is also a Javanese gamelan class. So we have many, many gamelons. We have many more than one gamelon <laughs> in, at Lewis and Clark. We have an ensemble, we have classes. So um, Erica, you yourself can join the ensemble. <laughs> I know, if you'd like. I, I think about it sometimes. And actually a fun fact, my gamelon instructor came from Lewis and Clark. He was Medianto. He left and went to Berkeley and I had him there. Anybody else? I can share one. Um, so we've talked with you a lot of this summer about taking a class that's just for fun. Um, but I, I really want to emphasize just how important that can be from my own experience. Um, I think in my first semester of my sophomore year, I, um, you know, was looking to fulfill an elective credit. And so I added in one of those just for fun classes. Um, for me, it was ancient Greek history, because I was very loosely interested in mythology and I had never studied this in any way, um, high school or college. And so I was like, I'm just gonna try it out. And it, aside from my major classes, I was an English major, it became um, one of my very favorite courses that I took during my time in university. And I actually ended up going on to complete a classical studies concentration because I just found all of a sudden this really beautiful connection between classical studies and English literature. And had I not just taken this class on a whim out of personal curiosity and kind of following my gut instinct, I wouldn't have known. So if there's something that's just really been kind of tugging at you and, and an interest of yours, um, sometimes it can just be a good idea to kind of follow your gut and go with it. And you might find that it's, you know, not for you, but at least you've given it a try. And um, I know that my degree was really enriched because of that risk that I took. So um, if that is a chance that comes up for you, I uh, highly endorse it. Katie McFadden, I'm curious about uh, the class you uh, took on a whim. Some friends talked me into taking um, an Indian, yeah, I know, an Indian philosophy class, which I just had no philosophy background, no East. I mean, I didn't have any frame of reference for it, but they said he's just a great professor and he's going to retire soon. So let's do it together. Come on, just take it with us. It'll be great. Um, and it was the class where I could most feel, I couldn't always grasp the concepts we were talking about right away, but I could feel my brain sort of um, like changing in some new way that I could get, it was just really interesting. It was great. And he was a great professor and I never would have picked it off a list myself. So at the end of the semester, I had to thank my friends for pulling me along and getting me to try it, it was great. That is a very good form of peer pressure. Yeah, it's good. <laughs> well, we're definitely a heavy humanities crowd and I am also was an English major. But when I started, I thought I was, I was convinced that I was going to be an international relations major. And so as part of that major, you, I had to take at my school and at Lewis and Clark, you have to take economics. And so um, I grew up thinking that I was really bad at math and that I wouldn't do well in the social sciences and that it just wasn't gonna be for me, but I took the class because it was part of the major and I did not continue with international relations, but I loved economics. I, it clicked, it made sense. It made the world make sense in a way that I didn't um, anticipate and I loved it. So um, I think that there's probably a lot of people out there that think, you know, I'm, I'm a hardcore history major. And yeah, I do think it's nice to try something that's completely outside of your, I don't know, what do you think you can do? And for the flip side too, I think there's a lot of CS majors out there who think that they're definitely, that's what they do. And that's kind of the only thing that they can do really well. But yeah, take that Japanese literature class or Greek history and you're probably gonna love it. <laughs> Well, this is a great liberal arts end to the kickoff of a liberal arts day. Um, and I think it seems like the theme is when in doubt, ask somebody. And if we don't know, we'll put you in touch. And I think for the upcoming um, fair, just do your best to kind of put yourself out there and talk to a few tables 
and maybe your friends like mine can drag you along in good peer pressure. So just listen in on a conversation um, if you don't necessarily want to ask the question. So we'll have academic fair today, meeting with your advisor, um, and then there will be the, uh, oh, help me out, the, the common reading with the speaker and your small groups. So it's going to be a great day. We hope you enjoy it a lot. And thank you for coming. Thank you. Thanks, Katie. Thanks, Erica. Thanks, Jenny. Thanks, everyone in the College Advising Center. Bye-bye.